There is a question I have been asked several times on this channel and I thought it's time I made a video about it and that is why do my digital VTXs have so many antennas? Why are there two antennas? What are the two antennas doing? And do I need to actually connect to both of them? So today I'm going to try and explain what the dual antenna VTX is all about, but also what is going on with the goggles and what the manufacturers here are likely doing with these two antennas. Now, from an ear side perspective, we do have lots of different systems. We have DJI with their O3 and O4 with their ear units here. You have OpenIPC that has two antennas. You have Avatar HD, which has the option of single or dual antennas, HD0. None of these, though, all will necessarily be doing the same thing. There are different options available to the manufacturer depending on the setup choice that they make. Now, when it comes to exactly how the multiple antennas are being used on these systems, we don't know everything, but I am going to explain the options. When it comes to what is happening on the single antenna VTXs, everything is pretty straightforward. Both Avatar HD and DJI are dual transmission systems in the sense of your Earside VTX transmits video down to the goggles and your goggles transmit telemetry data back up to the VTXs or ear units. As these only have a single antenna, that antenna and its port is used for both transmitting and receiving. Basically, the way this works is your VDX will transmit a bunch of data down and pause and listen. It'll then listen for the packets of data that's being sent back up from the goggles, and then it will continue to transmit and back and forth. It is incredibly complex. There's timing involved, but the very basics are, think of it as a conversation you have with your friend, a partner. You talk, they talk, you talk, they talk, and in theory, you shouldn't talk over each other and there's timing involved to ensure that that doesn't happen. When it then comes to the dual antenna VTXs, this is where things get interesting because as I've said, all of these VTXs are fully capable on both antenna ports and the manufacturers actually have a couple of options available on how they actually want to utilize both of the antennas on these VTXs. Now, the first method that is most likely being employed by most manufacturers is called spatial diversity. This is where you send the same packet of data over both antennas roughly at the same time. The reason I say roughly at the same time is that there is some minor timing differences between each of the antennas and it actually allows the ground station to be able to separate which packet actually comes from which transmission antenna. However, the basics are you are replicating the same data across both antennas within the same time window. The benefit to this is that it improves the signal reception capability of the ground station because it has twice as many opportunities to receive each signal. Each packet is being replicated across both antennas. So if the first packet that arrives from antenna A is corrupt, it has the opportunity to receive that same packet again from antenna B. And this is where I said there is a little bit of timing difference because it can offset the timing of them ever so slightly so it can receive the first packet, decide if there's a problem, and then choose what to do with the second packet. Just to show you this on this little animation, we have a dual antenna transmitter. Each of the bars across the bottom is one antenna, and you can see we are transmitting each packet from each antenna at the same time. There is then also the option of some clever things such as combining the data from the two packets as well. But the very basics to understand with spatial diversity is both antennas are used to send both the same packet of data roughly at the same time. The second option that is available is called spatial multiplexing. Rather than send the same packet of data across both antennas, i.e. transmitting it twice, instead you send each packet of data separately across each antenna. The benefit of this is you can send packet one and packet two at the same time. You send packet one on antenna A and packet two on antenna B. Again, showing on this little animation, this time you can see the packets are being split across each antenna. The top row is antenna one, the bottom row is antenna two, packet one is on the first antenna, packet two on the second, and so forth. 
As a result of this, you're able to increase the amount of data throughput the link is capable of taking. So for instance, instead of your link being, say, 10 megabits a second, that could allow you to increase it to 20 megabits a second because you're transmitting two pieces of different data at the same time. The downside to this, though, is that you don't have that redundancy that you get with the spatial diversity. As I've said earlier, spatial diversity sends the same packet twice. If one packet gets lost, you can actually then look at packet two. Whereas with spatial multiplexing, if packet one is lost, it is lost because it isn't being transmitted on the other antenna. Both of these systems have their upsides and downsides. One offers more redundancy, one offers more data throughput, and the reality is DJI Avatar, they may actually be employing either of these practices and changing that depending on what you're doing at the time with the system. So for instance, if you're very close range with a very high bit rate, it will be likely potentially using spatial multiplexing, whereas when you get further out, the link may switch into a different mode using spatial diversity to help with the redundancy. It really isn't as simple as they are going to use one or the other. The reality is they can use all of these in their toolbox to be able to tune their link to be able to get the best possible performance. As I've mentioned, we don't really fully understand exactly which of these they're doing. I suspect spatial diversity is used a lot, but spatial multiplexing maybe as well. As a result of that, if your VTX has two antennas, both ports must be used. Obviously, you then have the choices of antennas. Do you go for something like DJI have done here, where you have that dual antenna into one from the likes of Flyfish RC and the original DJI one? Or do you use single antennas onto each of the ports? I think the general consensus always is single antennas will perform better. Then we get into all of the ins and outs of, well, should I have the antennas at different angles? Do I do the rabbit ears approach like we have here on this quad? The truth is, as we don't fully understand the choice, this is probably the best setup. The reality is this setup is going to be ideal for both spatial multiplexing or spatial diversity. In the old days with the DJI antennas, we would have one sort of vertical like this and one maybe down a bit further like that there. That would work well with spatial diversity, but less so with spatial multiplexing. The reality is in all of FPV's testing and findings from many, many people, the rabbit ears approach like you see there is overall the best option. Obviously, if you have a dual antenna VTX like these that you don't want to run dual antennas on, then your next best option is something like the dual antenna from DJI or Flyfish RC. But what I can tell you is absolutely do not fly with just one antenna port. Whilst it may work, A, you have the potential of damaging or burning out the built-in power amplifier, more so on Avatar and B, you're not potentially getting the full performance from the system. Now, there is actually a technical term for this. A normal system that uses one antenna on either side is single in, single out. A system like we see here from DJI and Avatar might be multi in, multi out, or multi in, single out, depending on the setup that they're using. When it comes to goggles, things are also similar, but they're also a bit different as well, because we don't have two antennas at play here on goggles. We actually, on DJI and Avatar, have four or even six antennas at play. When it comes to what is being done here, it's a bit simpler on Avatar than it is DJI. So for instance, all the Avatar systems today operate with a multi-in, single-out scenario. That is, the goggles are capable of receiving multiple signals in across four antennas, but these goggles only transmit on one antenna, and as a result of that, there is no spatial diversity, spatial multiplexing from a transmission perspective on the goggles. There is a single transmission. So with Avatar, if you're using a dual transmission VTX, you have two transmissions coming in to the goggles that have the potential to be received on any 
of the four antennas and from the goggles there is a single transmission heading back to the VTX which again can be received on either of its two antennas or its one antenna if it's a single antenna model. Avatar as I've said only uses a single transmission antenna but DJI is a little bit different. DJI actually generally use two transmission antennas on their goggles so if we talk about the V2 goggles or the goggles 2 and Integra there are four antennas at play of which two can transmit definitely multi in multi out whereas on the goggles 3 as an example there is actually six antennas all six are capable of receiving but only two of those antennas are capable of transmitting still multi in multi out but they are using more antennas for receiving than they are transmitting just like they are on the other goggles you just have an extra two on these ones with regards to what DJI is doing on this side and avatar again you will have signal combining taking place you have the ability for the goggles to receive the signal across four antennas so a it helps with what orientation your aircraft is polarization but also it has the ability then to start combining the signals but again this all gets very complicated the very simple thing to understand is from an avatar perspective one going up from a dji perspective potential of two going up dji could absolutely be doing either multiplexing on their transmission back to the vtx or diversity both packets on two antennas or splitting the packets between both again I suspect they are doing both really though what I would say in all of this is don't get too lost in all of the technical side of this from an avatar perspective it's really simple one antenna transmits from the goggles if you want the best performance for long range put a directional antenna on that from a DJI perspective I'll be honest and I remain of the opinion I don't really think it is worth 95% of people upgrading the antennas on DJI goggles. This system just works so well, it really isn't worth it. If you absolutely have to though, I would suggest upgrading both of the transmitting antennas, which is always the external ones on DJI. There are six antennas in the goggles, three as an example, two external here, two in the band up here, as well as two at the front in the no section but these are the antennas that transmit on DJI not these now obviously the big question people will have is is a dual antenna VTX better than a single antenna VTX should I always buy one over the other and this is a complicated one to answer real world testing for the last five years with DJI now avatar has really shown that there is a negligible difference between the two as for why this is the case, well, again, it's complicated. A dual antenna VTX may offer benefits. However, it depends on if the manufacturer is using diversity or multiplexing, but also a dual antenna VTX brings in some downsides. Twice as many power amplifiers means more heat, more noise. The VTX has to deal with that. So it's really not as simple as being able to say absolutely one is better than another. As an example, a dual antenna VTX in a diversity setup in an area where you're flying in a bando where you're moving the aircraft around may benefit over a single antenna because you have the option of setting the antennas at different angles, avoiding the nulls. However, in a long range setup where your antennas are saying nice and flat, so in a wing it may make zero difference because the antenna orientation is not the factor there is no absolute answer here to say one is better than another if I was buying a VTX I would generally choose the dual antenna model however we have seen over the years that the actual difference is negligible and if a single antenna model suits your setup better don't worry about it choose that one because you're not really going to be losing a lot so hopefully that somewhat answers the question of why are there two antennas overall though we do not fully understand how each manufacturer is directly implementing this as i've said in dji's case i highly suspect they are switching between multiplexing and diversity depending on the situation it would explain why dji is just so good 
at dynamically changing how it's behaving, how it offers that penetration performance that it does. Avatar is much more basic in how its RF link works. I suspect Avatar is either limited to spatial diversity or limited to spatial multiplexing, but I suspect is spatial diversity, maybe switching between two, but it is a much less resilient link, doesn't have all of the bells and whistles that DJI has. In the end, the reality is the best thing you can do is put the best antennas that you can on your VTX, but there is so much with these that you don't have to worry about. I see a lot of questions around, should I go left-hand circular polarized? Should I go right-hand circular polarized? Oh my God, what happens if my goggles are linear versus my ear side being left? Honestly, people should not lose sleep over different polarizations as much on these digital systems because they are multi-in, multi-out, or at least multi-in, single-out. In the old days, having cross-polarization was a complete no-no on analog, on a single antenna to single antenna. In digital, having left-hand circular polarized antennas on your VTX and linear polarized on your goggles really is not going to cause any problems. Do not think it is the same level of loss between cross-polarization as it is on a single antenna to a single antenna. As I've said, we have six antennas in here, all at different orientations. Yes, obviously orientation is not polarization, but again, there is so much clever work being done with the way these systems are able to bring in signals of four or six antennas, correct any errors. I would just not lose sleep too much over it. I wouldn't go left to right circular polarized, but if your goggles are linear, choose a left, you will be absolutely fine on the air side. Now, I hope that answers the questions. If it has, please do consider checking out the links to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee. It is only through the support of my patrons I'm able to keep making content on this channel. And if you'd like to support us, the link is below. I want to say a huge thank you to all of my patrons. We would not be able to keep doing this without your support. Anyway, let me know what you think. Any questions, put it down below. Stay safe and I will speak to you soon.